Terastalizing is going to change competitive Pokemon in ways we can't even begin to imagine. But let's try anyway. So I want to talk about a couple ideas I've had, break down the strategy shown in the official trailers, and then go over theory as to what is possible, share some damage calculations because Pokemon's about to get weird, and even more. So if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, comment your thoughts down below. But I don't even think we're going to begin to scratch the surface above the surface of the depth of what is possible when any Pokemon can become a monotype of any type. It's about to get insane, but the first thing to break down is also from the official trailer because we see a Breloom hit a Blissey and then three-shot it after terrestrializing into the grass typing with Bullet Seed to show off the new loaded dice item. I said, hey, if anyone wants to run the damage calculations to find out if terrestrializing is like adaptability, giving you 2x damage, or if it's going to be like a stab on top of a stab for 2.25, please do the math. And then we had this legend do it. I don't know if it's Major's Mask or if it's supposed to be like Major's Mask to pun on Major's Mask. Either way, this guy said the conclusion is it leads me to believe it's a 1.5 boost to stab for a 2.25 boost to total damage. I didn't like 100% back this. And if someone else feels offended in that calculation, they can run it and post it in the comments for themselves. And we can get closer to the truth just off the information that we have. But that's, that's going to be big for damage calculation. And I feel one of the biggest things that 92% of Pokemon players don't understand is how damage theory applies to just base Pokemon games. Because let's say you have a Gengar and you're like, yo, Gengar, 130 special attack. That's a huge amount of special attack. When I play on the school ground and I'm going up against my friends, I use choice specs and it KOs everything. Well, that's not really the truth, even if you have like different natures and stuff. And this is where I take like a lot of specialization in trying to understand Pokemon, just the things that people don't really get. Because if you have choice specs on Gengar, it's a two hit KO on something as frail as a Syndrace. Like, yeah, maybe if you find something else that's even like more glass, your choice specs does get KOs. But then what does that mean for the life orb? Well, we had the life orb up and it shows that's still going to be a two hit KO and a healthy two hit KO. So we can get a tankier Pokemon in here, uh, Jolteon. Like you might not think like, oh, what do you mean tankier Pokemon for the Jolteon? But because the evolution stats actually has a 95 in special defense, it is taking less damage, but it's still a two hit KO. And then if we have no item, still a two hit KO. And that's where things get really weird because people generally see like once you're breaking over 120 in an offensive stat, you are in KO City. Now, a ground type Pokemon using Earthquake is going to be crazier than a special attacker using Shadow Ball. The damage starts to then really kick up, especially if that ground type has 135 attack or something like that. But either way, it's like showing that in a lot of Pokemon, when you just slap on a damaging thing, except in like weird tank matchups where you're disadvantaged anyways because... They're just bulking you out and then out sustaining and maybe even setting up. Your offensive item choice doesn't really matter too much. But now, let's say you terrestrialize Gengar into a ghost type Pokemon. That's just like a free plus one. Well, that's going to change your numbers up quite a lot because now, oh, that life orb, that's going to start finding KOs, isn't it? So we hit that. Yeah, and then against the Cinderace, that's going to be a KO. Against Pokemon that are more frail than Jolteon, which is quite a bit, that's going to be a KO. Um, the Now, speed and stuff starts getting weird, but then that's when we can splash in other Pokemon. Alakazam, falling off to tank creep. Also, speed creep, because it's a lot harder for Alakazam to find things that it just outspeeds. So then we have like some other things where it's like, yeah, Psychic into Jolteon with a Focus Sash. It kind of shows that the best that Alakazam can do is trade with Pokemon that are slower than it and then if we kind of add some other things so yeah like let's say you terrestrialize it into a psychic type for that 2.25x damage okay that's a lot if we get rid of focus ash for any damaging item now alakazam can ko almost anything that's you know relatively weak that's why i was like okay how 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 deep does this go what about porygon z one of the highest special attack hardest hitting adaptability pokemon 
and that's where it starts coming down like oh now abilities are really going to matter like do you just lean into the adaptability pokemon match that type go choice scarf or choice specs with its strongest move and this also kind of breaks down at the new move terror blast we don't know the base power of terror blast like if it's 90 because it's trying to match with you know the standard elemental moves ice beam thunderbolt flamethrower also kind of matching on physical power to where it's like you have something that compares to a stab earthquake but isn't as strong on every single pokemon let's say 90 base power well that means now pokemon that just have like a bread and butter move like the shadow ball on the gengar like the tri attack on the porygon they're just getting free power like that that's it 12 percent more damage for free because you're using that move instead of the stab you would have already used adaptability is crazy with this the terrestrializing is crazy with this also gives like the non double boosting some power on really any kind of pokemon so porygon there's a lot of numbers we can mess around and tinker with but let's say we have timid 90 speed adaptability choice specs try attack onto a sil valley so you might have seen like this 85 and gone Oh, but, like, that's not much more powerful than... Get no, this is a Sil Valley. This is a base 95 and everything. Now, no investment, but it's kind of showing, like, this is one of the... Like, for a non-invested tank Pokemon, this is the upper end. If you can KO a Sil Valley, you can KO anything uninvested. And that's why I like using it as, like, some kind of damage reference. Like, oh, that close combat, ignoring, like, the normal type and changing it to, like, just a neutral typing or something. That close combat, yeah, you can KO it on that, so you might want to lean into it. Or plus one... If you hit that Dragon Dance threshold on certain Pokemon, it's like, yeah, there you go. Now, now you're wrecking everything, and you really only have to worry about resist, resistive tanks. So the Tri-Attack just does this on the adaptability specs alone. And that's before we Terrastalize normal. And then that means, like, oh, we can go back to, like, a Choice Scarf. And we're still KOing crazy... Like, we're getting into crazy speed tier stuff, and then everything's just gone. Also, if, tri like, if the uh, move gets the buff... Now we're actually finding, like, healthier KOs, and things get even crazier. And then, like, I don't know if you want Timid Choice Scarf on 90. That sounds about right, especially because, like, Jolly Garchomps and stuff, which are already outspeeding you anyways. Uh, modest, though, depending on how much you want to, like, wall break and stuff. Like, yeah, you just KO everything. What about... Trying to think of... Uh, yeah, let's, let's throw up the Blissey. I was thinking, what if we did throw out a Blissey there? Okay. Numbers start to get a bit more balanced it is a testament to how crazy blissey is and this is with like full defensive investment and even the bold nature which is kind of one of the i i think yeah you still want bold it's it goes back and forth on that because you're gaining so little stats but it's still going to be like a 10 percent damage change so we go from bashful 35 why is that not updating oh because it's special attack duh so if we go from bold to calm, yeah, it's like 3% da less damage on a special attack, whereas this is going to give us like 10% less damage on a physical attack. Yeah, you want the bold. Sorry, I haven't played Pokemon Sword and Shield for uh, like a year because everything's hacked and I got to get back into Pokemon now as they're changing everything. So just kind of shows like, yeah, physical Pokemon going to be a thing. Blissey probably going to be very common or like very heavy dedicated tank Pokemon. Toxpex, it kind of like mixes it up and does all kinds of weird stuff. So it's going to be full defensive Toxpex getting two shot by the Tri Attack. Okay, now things are changing again. What if we go for. Oh, that's on Scarf as well. That's not even Specs on the uh, Tri Attack. And what if we have like some special defense investment? Still two shotting on the Scarf. So now, like, yeah, some Pokemon, the neutral doesn't matter. Like, you just cannot neutrally resist the Porygon, and, uh, and like, Poke Porygon, as an 85, 70, 75, it can survive, not the most overwhelming hit, so if it's getting out speeds because, like, an 80-speed Pokemon is leaning into its 130 offensive stat, Porygon still has two-shot potential, and, yeah, and but then we can see, like, Giga super hard special defense tanking, um, where does Mantine land on this, because Mantine is a very interesting special defense tank i'm just gonna screw with this because like smogon doesn't have any good sets uh we do that wow like what can you do it, it's really just blissey blissey the only chance you have against this and ghost type pokemon and a lot of ghost type pokemon are not gonna be ghost anymore because it's rastalizing game's about to get wacky assault vest about to be viable because everyone wants to like have porygon and gengar or something 
So that, yeah, that's also just the adaptability and some other shenanigans. So what we saw in the trailer was like some big brain stuff like, oh, Tyranitar, so get rid of its four times weakness, it just goes ghost. And by going ghost, you're also not even adding too many weaknesses like dark, yeah, ghost, yeah. But overall, it's like, okay, so now we're powerful. And then that means the Pokemon that you're going up against, you're going to have potentially some kind of advantage since this was going to be against a Gallade, super effective, Terra Blast, and that's a KO. So you can just kind of turn, like you just you just completely switch it. It went from, you're, you get outsped, you're one shot, zero effect in the game, to immune, you take nothing, they get KO'd. There's really nothing that exists in Pokemon, because like even if you switch, like you're not KOing your opponent by switching. So there's really nothing in Pokemon that changes the tide that much. Now that is like the big gimmick, that is like, use, well actually yeah I guess like Mega, and then using your Mega to gain speed and then do change the speed calculations live into a KO or something. But it's still pretty crazy how that ends up breaking down. So we have that Colossal becoming a water type Pokemon to proc the Steam Engine. Like you just think like, oh yeah, Colossal doesn't want to eat those water type hits. But Steam Engine doesn't change. Steam Engine does not care about type. Abilities do not care about your base type if you are actively changing your type on the fly. But then there's other like efficiencies and optimizations. What about becoming a Grass type? That way you now have the, the Terra Blast Grass and the Water type Pokemon that was threatening with or that was threatening you. You hit super effective. Now this adds like a lot of weaknesses back, and that's pretty bad. So Water technically the safer pick for just everything else, because like yeah, once you deal with the threat in front of you, you now don't want to be a Grass type that's weak to everything in the game. So there's some interesting breakdowns right there. It's kind of like showing like oh. I didn't even comprehend. I didn't even think about this. How did Pokemon make something smarter than me for competitive? And a lot of other people. I think a lot of other people were caught off guard like, Oh, you you can use Steam Engine like that. And that also wonders like, what if they bring in a new Steam Engine Pokemon? And then that becomes another possibility. Will this be super viable is the question. Like, this is cute. This is Fan Friday's cute if it gets the pop off. But sometimes that's just like, yeah, not the most viable stretch just really fun and super creative so if we're watching this happen it's like okay what do you do for the rest of the game i don't know now if your opponent terrestrializes they also have like some crazy pop-off potential that's the interesting thing about terrestrializing you don't click it and then select your type your pokemon is locked in for that type before the team selection even happens and you don't know it they don't know it like it's a, it's a completely blind experience. That's going to change Pokemon immensely. And I feel like you have to be the Gallade. You can't go, well, of course, stupid. It's a Tyranitar. It's not going to let you hit it fighting. But what if they have another Pokemon that wants to terrestrialize? Or what if their Tyranitar wants to become pure dark and then gain the double stab and then one shot things? So you, you I think it's one of those things like where, oh, you got the switch out play. But when reality, the win condition, and like when you're measuring how the game plays out, it's actually the most beneficial move to just throw the potential whiff. Because if they don't switch, or if they're trying to double mind game you, and you land that, what you gain is much greater than they gain. Also like switching and whatnot, they still lose tempo. They're now behind, they take free chip damage, and all that other stuff. So, I think you can't predict what someone's going to run. Even if like something becomes common, like 90% of Tyranitar end up going Ghost, that 10%, 100% going to be the one you're going up against in that battle, you get, like, gigajibated and lose. So, I, I think until it shows, you can't really try to predict. And also, what if it isn't even their Tyranitar? What if it's their Rotom? What if it's their other Pokemon that's terrestrializing into something else? I think it's actually going to be impossible to predict, which, in a way, levels the playing field for kind of everyone, since, like, the quote-unquote peak of combat Pokemon is, like, predictions and outplays and stuff. But if you watch the Pokemon VGC World Finals, that was just tragic. That was like over prediction and then it just looked like two children. That's really how VGC end up, ends up breaking down. The finals are like high VGC play. Just looks like two children playing Pokemon for some of the first times because they're just like over out predicting or then like the obvious play isn't made because they overthink it and kind of gets tragic that way. So with this like yeah, you you get to make your own strategy. I think that's another cool thing I'm slowly realizing about terrestrializing is that it allows any person to take any Pokemon and create something 100% novel. You can have a completely unique strategy based off of this that is viable. There's probably going to be some mad lad that ends up breaking Parasect. Because they like, hey, you get rid of all those weaknesses on Parasect and now it's just 
super strong. And that kind of goes into like some other weird things. This was just like labbing. It's like, okay, everyone's gonna, if, if Ninkata's in the game, everyone's gonna be running air balloon, electric type, Shedinja. There's no way this Pokemon can exist in like terrestrializing games because of these shenanigans. But like, sure, that's a thing. And also like a couple of other very straightforward, very common ideas. But will those be good is the question. Because there is a lot of defensive thought and defensive theory behind it, but I've also shown how the offensive theory is just as strong, if not stronger. Like, okay, I don't care about outplaying you on typing shenanigans, I'm just going to get stronger and one-shot you and break down every tank that would otherwise wall out my team. But then, like, what about setup? What about these other ideas? We have Go-Goat, finally back in the game. What if you turn Go-Goat into a ground-type Pokemon to lean into Sap Sipper? That way you have an immunity for one of your weaknesses, and then you just play it out like a ground-type Pokemon that has access to the moveset. So making it to where an otherwise not as viable typing or not the best combination, but a good moveset, now becomes really strong by playing up in some weird ways. And it's one of those things to where no one's going to throw a Grass-type move onto the Go-Goat, and activate your sap sipper so it's not like you're like oh the hidden power ground out plays is going to get him it's just kind of like oh i just have one less weakness now i am a stronger than average ground type pokemon with a pretty good distribution of stats i have access to the sustain i can bulk up as well and then we have either the terrestrializing move or just straight up earthquake like the Terras like terra blast is not going to have 100 base power if it does that's going to make pokemon even crazier but like okay so now I can just bring in Earthquake. Don't even need Terra Blast. I just get to look at my list of usable moves, find a powerful non-stab move, because like some Pokemon have that. Some Pokemon that don't have Fighting type have the Close Combat or the Flare Blitz or the very powerful high base power move. So now you just actually like make that stronger by becoming that typing. And then a lot of weird things can happen. Do you go with the Leech Seed? And then you got something weird and wacky like this on the setup that they just can't find a way to break down. We haven't even talked about the item. What if you, like there's also Pokemon where you just completely change their type, you go Assault Vest, and then you just run it down like that. Now Assault Vest wouldn't be viable here because of the setup, but like, this is what I mean, we, don't, we can't even begin to understand what absurdity is going to come out of this. Also, now that you've lost Grass, you don't have to stick to like the off Grass dual typing tech thing. You can run any other move now. So that gets weird. Wild Charge. Boom. We're not grass. We're just finding a 90 base power move that's going to slap into things because of our stats. Now, what if certain type combinations become more common? That there are a lot of water type Pokemon out there for reasons. Actually, then you're not really sacrificing Wild Charge versus some kind of random grass move, especially a Horn Leech, which would heal you off super effective hit. Pokemon's complicated. That's the overall thing. Um, other thoughts? This is where we start getting into scary territory. Pure Electric Rotom. Pure Electric Rotom. But he has Levitate. Wait, any Levitate Pokemon terrestrializing into Electric. I think that's going to be super common. If it's going to be good, remains to be seen. It's like, you are getting rid of one weakness Rotom. And it's kind of like, was that the thing keeping it in check? But now, you're not stuck to Rotom Wash. Rotom Wash was the common pick because it, it effectively has no weakness. Grass-type Pokemon are too fragile to just throw out stab grass moves at people. So, yeah, and, like, even then, like, Rotom's bulky enough to take a non-stab grass move. Now it can get nuked down. You will see, like, leaf storms and stuff. But that's where it's like, okay, so now you can turn any of the Rotom forms into the power of Rotom Wash's durability through types. What happens then? And then it's like, oh, wait, that means Rotom Fan... The flying meme doesn't really matter anymore. We have Levitate Rotom Fan that's now paraflinching you on pretty fat tank stats with a potential pain split. And it's just safe. But again, then we can just kind of look up any Levitate Pokemon. So, Levitate. All this fun stuff. Oh! Oh no! Oh! Oh no, no! 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 Okay, next! So I was also thinking that Ferrothorn, what if you also just like make it electric? But then Ferrothorn has weakness. It doesn't have a 4x though. And, and it's like, but then you're not trying to bait out the fire. It only works once. That's the thing. Like you terrestrialize your Pokemon and you get your your cute, haha, I turned it into a resistance once. But then you're also sacrificing power. 
So, like, you just make it to where your Ferrothorn is weak to only ground-type moves, which is mostly Earthquake, which are already a physical beast against, and then you just don't care. But you're getting rid of a 4x weakness, and also swapping around 2x weakness with the uh, fighting. So I think, like, that's also where things start opening up in a really interesting way, where, yeah, just do this. How It's going to be strong. So, much like how I've been right about pretty much everything when it comes to Pokemon Unite since launch, and I've always been, like, one of the most elite competitive Pokemon players uh, for over a decade now, um, I'm just kind of, like, thinking it's not going to be about those, su like, super crazy outplays. Smogon is going to collapse. They're, they, dude, if they ban Thrasilizing, like how they ban Dynamax because they're just shitters at the game, it's going to be hilarious. Or if they're going to, like, restrict Thrasilizing type combinations because their predictions don't work. My favorite thing is, like, back in generation, actually, I think this is everyone's favorite thing, is that when they have a Ferrothorn, and then you have a Pokemon that, like, beats Ferrothorn, but you're supposed to respect Ferrothorn, and they don't get their free Stealth Rocks, what happened in Generation 6? I got dozens of free wins in generation six because i used mega Met metacham i would lead mega metacham they would lead ferrothorn high jump kick 100 percent of the time me i'd win like 90 percent of games off that because they're like but ferrothorn can have protect so you're actually a bad player by just throwing out the high jump kick because i wanted my stealth rocks if i don't set stealth rocks turn one i rage quit because you're a bad player and if you're just that bad of a player to not respect the lead then we're not even, this isn't even competitive Pokemon. Like, that's, that Smogon tier is about to go just nuclear. Like, that is about to be a full meltdown as to what's going to happen when these kids that play for, like, all these crazy predictions, they're only allowed one per game, and they're making the rest of their team, like, their entire team, because now none of the other Pokemon are going to have that trick. Their Terrastalizing is weaker. So they're going to hurt themselves off of one play. They think they're big brain, but they're just trash. Like, Smogon players have always been trash for ever. So that's going to be funny and interesting right there where it's like, ah, I became a water type Ferrothorn. Oh, now you're weak to electric and grass. And there's also going to be like a lot of other stuff into how that ends up playing out where it's like, ah, I'll just be weak to ground. I'll be strong against it because I'm physically tanky. And now we're just playing off of weaknesses and adding in other synergies. People are contemplating making Blissey a poison type Pokemon. That way it cannot be toxic. But also, like, Toxic did get kind of dinged, so, you know, you're not finding as much Toxic stalling. We don't know how the movesets are going to change up, if they add, like, a few more Toxic stallers back in or something. How all that game is going to change, the Pokemon that end up coming in, all of that fun stuff. But yeah, like, the game's, the, the game's about to get really interesting, and then we can just think about typings. Like, you just turn a Grass-type Pokemon into anything, and it's going to be having a better time. Um, except for maybe Superior. However, now you have Contrary Leaf Storm that starts off plus one. Hoo-hoo. Superior about to get scary. Yeah, you get you get away with that Scarf. 113 speed, Scarf, stronger Contrary. You just roll everything, and then it gets to the point where it doesn't matter if they're resisting. And that's another weird thing. That a lot of, like, strong dual resist tanky Pokemon are going to be coming Monotype. That's going to change the game. Yeah, imagine if you're trying to get cute. You're like, haha, I turned into Water-type Colossal for the one turn, and then I w KO'd his Pokemon. Well, now you're a Water-type Colossal, and then I bring in a Grass-type Pokemon. I bring in the Superior. So now you're getting, like, super effective nuked. You don't have Fire Stab into me, and you're Terrastalized super, like, your stab move. Like, you're faster, but you're only doing a third to my Superior in, like, every situation. And now I'm getting free contrary snowballing into you. G GG, good luck, have fun. You know, so we have... And then there's going to be, like, less resistances. What if Ferrothorn just becomes a Mono instead? Or what if Venusaur, Amoongus, drop that poison typing? So now the grass stalling is actually not as bad. That's... That's really nice, because one of my one of my least favorite things about running Amoongus... I love running Amoongus, because you go Regenerator... You fat it out as, like, a dedicated special defense tank. You have all kinds of access. You know, it's like, okay, so I can Giga Drain for some damage. I can Sludge Bomb for some damage. I can, uh, whoop, not that. I can Synthesis for infinite sustain. And then I can Spore for status disruption. If they bring out another Moongus, the game now goes to time. If they bring out a Venusaur, the game now goes to time. If they bring out a Ferrothorn, 
the game now goes to time. The game just halts. The game ends. It doesn't matter what happens. You're now playing for a tie. So if they if their Pokemon like their Ferrothorn doesn't want to have that fire weaknesses, so they change things around. Now you're actually not getting as hard stalled out in previously stally situations. They made their Ferrothorn a fire type Pokemon to bait out like the Flare Blitz or something, or the Fire Blast, or the Terrast not not my Terrastalize, but like you know some kind of like flamethrower or something. Okay, Superior resists that, but Superior's contrary will get over it. So I think Superior, if it's in the game at some point with Terra attacks, going to get nasty. So yeah, like any Grass type Pokemon. You, you can now just make it anything. It's not like, oh, every Grass-type Pokemon needs to become X. Even though, like, every Pokemon becoming an Electro-type is going to be pretty funny. So, Meganium, not having as many weaknesses. Parasect, not having as many weaknesses. Any Pokemon that's just ruined by a 4X. Gastrodon. Gastrodon, like, yeah, it, it does really well until that Grass-type happens. So what if you just make it into something a bit more balanced? You make it Pure Water-type. But now it's survivable because of, like, just numbers and stuff. Um, also depends on, like, what ends up becoming common, you know? This is going to be a lot of meta adaptation. That's unfortunately why hacking is going to have a massive advantage, because now, with all the time it takes to get one competitive Pokemon, you have to do that for five different Terra types, and God knows how that's going to work. Especially if the meta's changing towards, like, oh, I need to have three different Terra types for each of my competitive Pokemon, because the meta is just kind of, like, shifting so much. That might get ugly, but in, like, play like just kind of watching Pokemon unfold it's gonna be interesting Appleton without as many weaknesses cool so there's defensive viability there's offensive viability there's a lot of changing ice type Pokemon also going to be big winners out of this depending on what types you're playing around with like Avalug again like I don't know what the best Avalug Terra type is going to be that synergizes like with its moveset with its stuff like that but it's going to have less weaknesses and then then the strategy gets even crazier. What if you have like three Pokemon? You're like I, you can tear it's like Dynamax. You can terrestrialize at any point. So what if I just have it set up to where like Avalug has X typing, Amoongus has X typing, and then Superior has X typing. And I can choose when to do it. Like if I see their team, it's like, what if my Avalug is actually um steel? I'm still add I'm still contributing a lot of weaknesses with this, but I'm immune to toxic. So if I see it to where like none of my weaknesses if I go into Steel Avalug exist here. That also opens up some other things like Body Press. Actually, we can go ahead and Power Fighting. Who wants to become a pure fighting type as a tank? Well, that archetype doesn't exist. That is completely untested territory. So now we got this. Our Body Press is doing more damage. Um, same thing for Heavy Slam or Gyro Ball. You can become a, you can take a Gyro Balling Pokemon and then make it in Steel type. Now 8 PP kind of gets weird. Same thing on like the Heavy Slam and stuff. But depending on how those stats are going, Curse Gyro Ball, you become Steel, you now can't be Toxic stalled, and that means something like the... Nor like, what if this becomes common? What if everyone's just running Scarf, One-Shot, Steamroll, Porygon? Well, now, even though it doesn't make sense to add weaknesses or to have, like, a somewhat vulnerable typing, you want to play for those resistances. So now I come in, oh, what's that? Steel? All those, like, crazy stats that people are going for, all the cheeky stuff? I'm just resisting. I'm just, I'm just resisting overwhelming terrestrializing. So there's going to be no shorter than 12 billion layers to everyone's team composition. And I think that's also where the winning is going to go. And my brain ain't big enough for that. Like, if ironically, if you found me when I was younger, when I was like in Generation 4 and I was the best Pokemon player in the world, indisputably, no doubt in my mind, I probably could have come up with something like, geez... Now what? Now now how am I going to now how am I going to think about this? But yeah, like it's one of those things to where if every terra type on your team compensates for every possibility of terra type for the opponent's team while synergizing with the terra types on your team, and you just make it to where you lock out any opponent's option with your one terra type win condition out of the six possible ones, that's crazy. Also, it means that a reliance on Terra Blast gets kind of spooky. What if you have two Pokemon that have a Terra Blast? Well, now you're three move slots, like four move slotting some Pokemon or three move slot syndroming, whatever. So you're hitting that on multiple Pokemon. Is it stronger? Potentially. Like if you find that stab Terra Blast when you need it and it ends up becoming a win condition where it otherwise wasn't, very nice. Otherwise, you're just weaker. Um, same thing for Mega. Some people bring two Mega Stones. You're down an item. 
But if that one mega is what is the zero percent chance, like if your win condition goes from zero percent chance to a hundred percent chance because you're doubling up on useless items, you win. That's all that matters. All that matters is winning. Does making the really weird Terra type change matter? And it's just going to get deeper and more complex, or is it all just going to kind of centralize and be like, yep, everyone's a levitate electric. Good luck with that. But then again, Porygon comes in and says, I don't care because I'm neutrally destroying everything. And the less ghost type Pokemon, the less steel type Pokemon, the better. The less rock type Pokemon, the better. Like, ign ignore this part. But yeah. The, le the less Pokemon. So everything's getting weird and the win conditions are going to get even crazier. And I've always been a win condition player. That's what makes me one of the best players in Pokemon is I understand win conditions better than anyone else. So, I'm always there to, like, salvage the game and find a win where no one else could. This is going to get even better. Or does it backfire because, like, all my strategies just become completely useless to how cute Terra is? Who knows? It's about to get fun. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.